We have got our special guest ready this evening who's ready to talk to you. So if you could please welcome to the stage England and Everton footballer Leighton Baines. Thanks for joining us tonight, Leighton. Um, first of all, it's a really good turnout, isn't there, as well? Yeah. And I know you've been having a look around the exhibition. What, what's your thoughts of the mind map? Uh, it looks great. Obviously, I, I had a couple of conversations with, with Phil uh, a few couple of months back, and he showed me some bits of uh, what he'd been doing and trying to put things together. And, you know, seeing it come together, you know, the event and the site, the exhibition and stuff, it, it looks, looks really good. And mental health has become quite a topic in sport and in football at the moment and do you feel it's becoming a more open subject within football? I think it is I think within football within you know society generally it's uh, becoming something people seem to be more comfortable opening up about which is obviously only a positive thing I think the more people that are, are willing to you know show their own vulnerabilities I think only is going to help others because you know sometimes you can if people are suffering and you feel like you're kind of on your own, and, and especially in the world we live in now where everyone's constantly uh, projecting, you know, all the, all the best bits from their life, you know, you can, you can kind of feel a bit lonely a, a bit at times. So it's nice that people are starting to open up a bit more and I'm sure, you know, that gives encouragement to other people to then, you know, start conversation and, and little things like that can make a big difference. I'm sure you've heard this before, but a lot of people look at footballers and think, why would they be stressed? What, <laughs> you know, what have they got to worry about? Their lifestyle it is a dream. But you've recently been, spent three and a half months out injured, getting back into the team. How does it feel for you? Because you love playing football. That must be frustrating. How does it make you feel when you can't play? It is, but it gets easier as you get older, really, because you, you learn to, to just deal with life better, I suppose. And... Um, yeah, I think, you know, being out on the sidelines when I was young was always, you know, super frustrating. I can remember, you know, you go, you know, you don't pick up your first injury until you're in your 20s. And it's just such a shock because you think, you know, at that young age, you know, it's never going to catch up with you. And um, when it does, you sort of lose your structure. Although you're going in, you know, you've been used to, to your schedule and, and living around that. And all of a sudden that falls away. But as I say, as you get older, your life starts to change. Your perspective changes once you've got a family and... And kids and things like that, and you, you can, you know, you, you get the opportunity to work hard while you while you're in uh, recovering from your injury and stuff. But you also can start to explore other, the other parts of your life that where you may have interests as well. How do I always think about footballers as well? It's it's you know fantastic job. It's every child's dream, isn't it? But it comes with a lot of criticism as well. If you have a bad performance or the team has a bad performance, you can hear those fans. You're not that far away from them. Or if you pick up a newspaper, there's a negative review of your performance, or you put the telly on like the rest of us do on a Sunday morning, and someone's critiquing your performance. How do you and the other players deal with that? Do you ignore it or do you take it on board? Um. Yeah, me personally, I probably haven't read a paper or sort of w watched a sort of review, if you like, for quite a few years now. It just um, doesn't really appeal to me. And, and I always think, you know, like there's been times after a game when, you know, you might have a good moment in a game and you'll get praised after it. But, you know, within the team and what the team is trying to do on that day, things that the untrained eye might not have picked up on, you know, you've let your teammates down different times and things like that and like say you know yourself when you walk off the pitch especially when you've been playing football for a while you know if you've done your job or if you haven't and um, without sort of being too disrespectful to to other people you know not everyone is is educated and some people aren't some, some people are some people aren't and everyone's entitled to that opinion and I think you get to a point where you just accept that accept that people are going to have those opinions you can't please everyone in life and that's kind of I suppose what the mind map says as well to younger people. It's just a life lesson. You can't please everyone. No, and that, that, that's it. And I think um, probably part of my nature is, you know, that you do, you do want to be able to do that. But so you get to a point where you realise it's not possible and it's too much pressure to put on yourself to, to, to do that. So say so I, I always feel comfortable knowing that I take football very serious and I prepare diligently throughout the week. I train well. I look after my diet, I do all the work that's expected of me. And my intention when I go out is always to do my best and never go out there thinking, I don't want to play well today, I don't want us to win, you know. And 
you know, by doing all the right things, I can look myself in the mirror afterwards, and if it didn't go well, I can I know that I did everything that I could, um, give myself the best possible chance. It just those things can happen. You have a lot of hobbies, so how do you relax away from football, and is it important for you to have that time totally away from the game? Yeah, that's something that's probably happened more and more as I've got older. Is, um, just naturally, really, it's probably become more space between me and, and football as a as an interest in terms of following it and watching it and and things. And uh, yeah, I'm mostly just walking around town and. Uh, you do street photography, don't? For those that don't know, you do street photography. Yeah, I've enjoyed getting into photography and um, yeah, just general, just normal stuff. Reading, I'll be sitting around town reading a book in different coffee shops or. And, pe- and no one notices it's you. Uh, sometimes, yeah. I think everyone, most people, are used, used to me just like <laughs> hanging around and annoying people. So. Taking your camera out. Yeah. <laughs> is that something that you like to to look at for you know when football is finished? You know, getting into something like photography or or you know, your music you're into as well. Yeah, you know, I've got I've got no idea at the moment. Football's kind of all I've ever known, um, and that you know at, at this stage is a time when y- your mind can start running away with itself again you know you're coming towards the end of your career and everyone seems to want to know you know what's next and I, you know you just don't know and like I say I don't know anything else I've got interest and people often say that to me oh you'll be okay you're into other things but you know they're like I say they're just interests and hobbies I don't really know how to do any of them well <laughs> so you know, so you're not going to be a wedding photographer or something? Oh, I mean, you never know. <laughs> Someone offers me a job, I might come and do it. But um, there are things I enjoy, and it's fun, and it, it'd be amazing if, you know, after doing something I'd always wanted to do, I could then go in um, and find something else that, that's fun and that I enjoy. But, yeah, I, who knows? We've been mentioning tonight, obviously, about football and sports in general, I think, now is well aware we've even seen the royal family getting involved in you know mental health issues and promoting the fact that it's okay to talk about them and we've seen the likes of frank bruno clark carlisle victoria pendleton these people who you look at and think wow they've got great careers but they've all come out and said i've also got my own mental health issues and i'm being open about it and i know you work with everton in the community as well which does a great job do you think now we're at a turning point where sport and, and football is going to look at mental health in a different way and say it's fine to talk about it now. It's it's not weak. I think we are getting there, and and hopefully things will continue to to improve. And the more people, you know, that that do come out and as I say show those vulnerabilities, then you know the more it may encourage uh, other people to, you know, even if it's not, even if you're not comfortable and you don't want to come out and talk about it, um, just feel consoled almost in a way that you know you look into these people whose lives maybe look perfect and know that you know it's not the case no one's life's perfect everyone's dealing with something and you know some people's problems or issues will be bigger than others but you know everyone's got to deal with what's on their plate really and I think it's about finding the right tools, whether that's somebody you can talk to, whether that, you know, there's there's so much out there available to us now, you know, things like therapy and stuff can be expensive, but there's apps, there's podcasts, there's, you find the right places, there's books to read and you can educate yourself and, and, and I say, it, finding a, a sort of, you can, you can cultivate a, a structure in your life that, that will help you if you're willing to put in the work, you know, you, you've got to be willing to do that, you can't just you know, expect things to get better just because you want them to. You've got to, you've got to work at it, and you know that's going to be time. And like I say, there's there's enough uh, outlets now. I think for it, hopefully, not to cost too much money. That sometimes people haven't got that. You there's a there's something out there for you to be able to find some help. It's always fascinating to talk to you. I'm sure you agree. It's been fantastic to listen to Leighton this evening. We appreciate you being really honest oh, and cheers. open with us and your time tonight. So. Please thank Everton footballer Leighton Baines. Thanks.